Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I have a couple stories for you in this very latest Moon Lambo Hot Jam. And I'll start with this one from you today. Jed McCaleb receives 291.5 million XRP from Ripple and sells 10 million at once. So yes, and indeed, this is resulting in uh, Jed McCaleb having more money than God, effectively. And uh, I'm going to share with you, because good news is, good news is, he is going to run out of all of his XRP at this pace very, very quickly. And there's a website that's actually dedicated to tracking this, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, and then there's this story from Cointelegraph. Highly fascinating. Reality show is casting crypto users locked out of their wallets. Now, uh, interesting story concept no matter what, but of extra interest to me anyway. Uh, well, in particular, because I'm running an XRP-centric channel, you know, it, it, it's, you know, everything I talk about, it's it's through the lens of a XRP holder, at least. Well, uh, Ripple's former CTO, Stefan Thomas, uh, he cited in this article because, uh, did you know, uh, he actually owns hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, but he doesn't know how to access his account. Yikes, yeah, so, <laughs> but anyway, plenty to talk about, but before I go any further, I do want to be clear that um, I do not have a financial background of any kind, I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write, I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos as a super duper fun hobby about Ripple and XRP and losing millions, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, apparently. That, that's what I make videos about. So anyway, into this first piece now. A Ripple fintech service provider has moved another large amount of XRP to the person who helped found it and worked as its first CTO for a year, Jed McCaleb. Uh, he has received over 291 million XRP tokens from the company, a tweet posted by the Whale Alert service that tracks large transactions of digital currencies, says... Now, McCaleb did not bother to postpone selling XRP and sent around 10 million XRP to a crypto exchange. And, and look, although it's uh, provably the case that Jed selling his XRP is not in any sort of measurable way um, negatively impacting the global price of XRP, uh, even though that's true, I'm tired of people pretending that it is. The, the XRP and Ripple haters out there, they will pretend that the quote-unquote bimping of the XRP by Jed McCaleb is uh, materially harming XRP investors. It's just not the case. Uh, there's so many ways you can look at it to, to clearly figure this out, uh, in, including the fact that when Jed sells his XRP, it doesn't, like the, the global price of XRP doesn't flinch. So th that's easy. Um, also, XRP ran up to almost $4 a few years ago while Jed McCaleb was selling. It clearly is the case that he's not impacting this. So anyway, um, data shared by the Will Alert Twitter bot shows that around 15 hours ago, Ripple Labs transferred a whopping 291 million tokens uh, to the wallet belonging to Jed McCaleb, which is worth at the time about $192 million dollars. Um, and so here, I want to share with you, here's the website. It's uh, jed.teq.dev. Uh, That's what's on the website here. It just shows Jed's, Jed's balance and what's remaining, just a little under 1 billion XRP. And he, he started with 9 billion, I believe is what it's, uh, I think it said that in this article too. And I think that was the number he, a number he, <laughs> I think it was the number that I had in my mind too. Uh, it, suffice to say, like a, a ton of XRP. And uh, it might sound ridiculous that somebody could have that much and just own that much XRP, but understand that at the inception of XRP, at the creation, at the launch of all of this, that XRP was worth zero dollars and zero cents. There's no way you could have known that XRP would be this wildly successful and this meaningfully adopted, uh, you know, just a, you know, less than a decade later. And so, yes, it's a lot and I, I get it. But uh, people people say like it's it's greed or this or that. I'm sitting there. My gosh, you, you don't know like the legal consequences that they might have had to face because you're talking about the like it was 2011 when they started uh, 2011 when they started to create this. Uh, you didn't know the risk that you were taking to create something, and then again, at inception, was worth absolutely nothing. And so the fact that the world adopted it in this way and decided humans have decided this is what it's worth—that's not Jed's fault. It's not Chris Larson's fault. It's not Brad Garlinghouse's fault. 
And I'm glad that it's happened here. And so he, if, if he's enriched, and he certainly is as a result of this, I'm all for it. I don't care. Um, XRP wouldn't exist without this man. So cool in my book here. Uh, but here you can see the one-week average of uh, his XRP sales. I'll just round the number here. 7.7 .7 million. So it's to the left where I'm circling on the screen here. 7.7 .7 million XRP sold uh, for a day. So at that pace, it would be, he'd run out of all of his XRP in 126 days. So it'd be November 11th this year. Now, the one-month average shows that he had sold 7.8 uh, million uh, XRP per day. If you just look at the one-month average, which means he'd be out of all of his XRP in 124 days, or November 9th this year. And if you look at the three-month average, he sold 12.1 million XRP per day, which means at that pace, he'd be out in just 80 days. Uh, he'd be out of all of his XRP September 26th this year. And, and so the, the greater the volume, the more XRP he can sell. So as things heat up and XRP starts going bonkers again, which to me, I, I think it's just an inevitability. If it happens sooner than later, he'll be able to sell more XRP and he could be out even sooner than that potentially. And I would love that because he doesn't want to hold it. I don't want him to hold it. You probably don't want him to hold it. And, uh, it, I, you know, I also don't want him to be able to dump all of, the, all of it at once. So that, you know, dump a billion XRP, that's that uh, one sitting, not exactly ideal. That might, that might do something. That might put a dent in the price. And of course, you know, it would get absorbed and, the, you know, markets would figure it out. It's not like it would be the end of XRP. But why go through that type of turbulence anyway? All right. So uh, now into this piece from Cointelegraph. Reality show is casting crypto users locked out of their wallets. Interesting concept, right? Um, and here you go. A casting call for a cable network series may offer crypto users at the end of their rope a way to access tokens locked away, or at least show viewers some of the options available to them. In a LinkedIn post from last month, casting director Jessica Jorgensen called on crypto users who have forgotten their passwords and presumably their seed phrases or lost their private keys to wallets with the clock ticking. The series offers consultations from cryptocurrency and cybersecurity experts to help users recover access to their funds. However, it seems participants must be prepared to lose access to their coins if the attempted recovery is not successful. Jorgensen specifically asks users to mention how many passwords they have remaining before their accounts are locked, and if they're willing to use the remaining attempts with the help of experts. There are many ways to lose one's crypto holdings. One April 2020 study from digital research firm Kane Island suggested that there would never be more than 14 million Bitcoin in circulation given the incidence of users losing keys, accidentally throwing away hardware containing wallets, sending crypto to the wrong address, or failing to make arrangements to pass on their holdings after death. Now, one of the more famous and expensive examples of lost coins include the case of San Francisco-based programmer Stefan Thomas, who lost the password to access his Iron Key hard drive with 7,002 Bitcoin or $243 million at the time of publication. And so that's, that, that's, that's the guy I was talking about at the outset of the video. That's Ripple's former CTO, who is now running uh, Coil, which uh, has come up with a new form of web monetization. And uh, that's got a sting. My gosh, he has, so he's actually technically ridiculously wealthy, but he kind of can't touch it. 7,002 Bitcoin, whew. And so uh, Thomas reportedly still has two attempts to guess the correct password before the hard drive's contents are seemingly irreversibly encrypted. And uh, some other cases of recovered crypto stem from early in Bitcoin's history, i.e. from 2010 to 2011, when the coin was worth pennies and sometimes given as prizes for online games and contests. In January, one Redditor claimed to have found private keys to more than $4 million in Bitcoin obtained before 2012 on an older model Dell computer. Now, that would be a hell of a payday. And I have heard stuff like that, too, and I'm happy for the people when they, they get it and they're able to cash out and have life-changing money, but man, what a ride. I feel really bad for Steph Stefan Thomas. And so you, you got to wonder, like, because look, he's actually, I, he's publicly talked about this. Like, he has consulted with other uh, people who'd be, like, basically considered experts uh, in, in the field here. And uh, 
they haven't come up with a solution yet, but given that he's only got two attempts left, um, I mean, maybe he'll take another crack at it at some point, but I don't know that he's going to need the help of any experts on a reality TV show. So I'm not really convinced. I mean, maybe we'll be wrong. It'd be neat to watch a show with him on it and talking about this stuff, but uh, I kind of, if I had to guess for fun, uh, I, I kind of doubt that he'd do this, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, he'd, he'd be perfect for the show it's just such an amazing story here but again i also i just i don't think that uh he, he's gonna need whatever assistance they could offer he's already speaking as he's publicly stated he's, he's already speaking with people uh that are trying to help him because everybody feels bad uh for for the fact that this happened so who knows maybe we'll have an awesome news story where one day where he actually does take a crack at this and actually gets his bitcoin back and that would be incredible i would love to see that happen for him but uh, anyway, I'll go ahead and wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.